Hello and welcome to this week's episode of My CP Does Not Define Me, where we focus less on the gifts and more on the ability of what we can do. Join us every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, live on the Disability Global Broadcast and Facebook Live. Looking forward to seeing you there. What's up, everybody? It's B to the J with the roll away, and it's time for episode 99. 99 is doing fine, and we're almost at that magical number 100. A lot of people have been asking what 100 is going to be, but we're not there yet, so I'm not going to talk about it. So today, today is a very special day because a few small announcements to make. As we bring our guest to the right end of the show, you've seen her before, uh, Miss Christina McCormick. She's awesome, amazing, and wonderful, and all of that stuff. And she runs 5Ks, and she teaches, and she speaks in Spanish, and she's going to Spain at some point. There's nothing this woman can't do. I think she has CP superpowers, and we just don't know it yet. Um, want to welcome everybody into the show. We are live on Facebook, Greenyard the Disability Global Broadcast, and we're live in my office right now. Hey, Cindy, how are you? Um, I, 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 Tucker wanted to be on the show, too. You know, he wanted to come in and say, Mow. that's Kitty Talk for hello, everybody. Yeah, I'm surprised he sat with me this long. Usually he doesn't put up with me just grabbing him and being like, sit here. So uh, He's just like, oh, could you just scratch a little to the left? Yeah, right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, Whatever um, I can do to keep my co-host here, even if it means continuous kid scratches. Yeah, he's such a good kitty. I, I you know... A uh, couple of just household announcements here. Um, my chair is available everywhere on every platform. Out right now on Amazon Music, YouTube, iTunes, Pandora, Spotify. Pretty much available. I'm pretty, pretty much available on Mars somewhere. You can find it at all of your local stories. Steve, don't even watch your face, bro. Oh, that was me. I blocked it. Um, but it is available everywhere. You can get it on iTunes for $9.99. You can get it on Amazon for uh, $8.49. You can buy a regular CD from the Amazon store for $15. And also, you can get them from me. It's all in the description below, all the packages that I have. So please be aware. If you haven't bought one yet, get them quickly because we have about 60 left. That's right, 60. They are going faster than my CP at a press conference. I'll tell you, that's just horrible. Anyway, um, so that was the first part. The other announcement I want to make real quick is I woke up this morning getting ready for the show, and I said, oh, man, I have to go to the bathroom, and I like put my chair in a hyperdrive, and Marshall said, hey, there's water in the ceiling light, and we look up, and I get to the bathroom, and Two seconds before I go in, the ceiling like falls and shatters everywhere. So we had a leak this morning. I still got ready for the show. And I'm avoiding shards of glass and ducking and dodging and using all my martial arts skills. I'm still alive. Thank you, Cindy. I'm glad you love the CD. And for those of you that have gotten yours and commented and said it's so great, thank you. I got a Great message from my cousin this morning. She was crying. Oh my God. You guys have been great for those that have been ordered and for those that have not gotten yours yet. They're coming, I swear. Oh, well, this post, I mean, you know, the post office has been questionable sometimes with the pandemic. And um, yeah, my CD will eventually get here, but for right now, it's just floating out wherever so the suspense I'm, I'm about just to send her another one i'm like i'll just send you another one i can't stand the suspense anymore i just i wanted to have it and i felt really bad because i went to the mailbox because i had gotten a package that i didn't know what it was and i was like maybe it's here and then it wasn't here i was like it's here and then i pouted because it wasn't um thank you thank you thank you appreciate that um and that came up Facebook user again. That might be Miss Wilson. I'm not sure, um, but it's come up Facebook user again. So I, I'm not sure who you are, but thank you 
Um, well, let's get into it. Miss Christina, how are you? I am good. I mean, I feel like my summer just kind of began a couple of weeks ago when I finished up some of my responsibilities. So I've just been having lots of family time, spending lots of time at the gym, lots of time recovering from the gym, sitting here on the couch with my cat, you know, and uh, just really enjoying the summer for what it is, because I know that things are going to get even busier come school time in August. So... Well, and that was Siobhan, actually. I don't know why some of these are coming up Facebook user when it's actually people that I know. That's very strange. Um, I, I had that happen last week. Um, for those of us that, that don't know your wonderful self, do me a favor and just share a little bit about who you are, what you do, you know, you know your CP superpowers, I mean, all of that. Um, let us know who you are and, and bring us bring us up to date. I mean, I'm not sure that I have CP superpowers. I would just more so say that I'm extremely, extremely stubborn, and that's all that you really need. Uh, my name is Christina McCormick. I'm 27, just turned 27 in April, and I am a CP warrior, but I'm also more than that. I love to travel. I am actually going to Spain here in a little while uh, to celebrate the finishing of my master's degree uh, and enjoy a graduation. So that's very exciting. In addition to traveling, I am a little bit of a gym rat these days. Uh, I work with a personal trainer and I swim laps and I also enjoy uh, an occasional monthly 5K to test out my speed and see where I'm at. So, Oh, yeah, and I'm a cat mom, and I'm a Spanish teacher, have been for five years, uh, just finished my fifth year in the classroom, and uh, yeah, that's that's the short of me, anyway. You, you notice how she said, I occasionally run 5Ks? This, this woman runs 5Ks like I eat cereal, like, good Lord, like, I mean... You know, I'm doing a 5K Saturday. Oh, really? Whoa, okay. I've got one next Saturday, too. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, the beginning of the summer was real busy. I had two right in a row, and then I had about a three-week break, and then I just did another one last weekend, which I my, my legs are still recovering from, but my core was fine, so I still went to the gym today for a core workout. Yeah, and it's a, I occasionally work out at the gym. She's got bigger guns than Arnold Schwarzenegger, and you're like, I occasionally work out at the gym. I pump up the iron, but um, I mean, I, you know, some of the stuff that she's doing, I've seen some of the videos when you've got a good personal trainer and you've got a good therapist to work with and you get those exercises and you're able to do them on top of building that CP strength and also, you know, getting yourself in shape and where you want to be. How, how are you feeling right now? Cause you've accomplished so much. You know, I, I have to say, honestly, I really do surprise myself because there's definitely, there was definitely a point, you know, about two and a half years ago when physical therapy started and all this started where I didn't think I'd be doing things like this just because, not that I didn't think that it would ever be possible, but at that point, I was not ready for some of the things that I'm doing right now, you know, and I've really been consistent and worked up to it. And people will ask me, oh, you know, what's what's your exercise routine or I need your exercise routine. And I was like, well, that's kind of tough because it's a lot of different things, but I mean, it's consistency too. Like I have certain days of the week that I swim. I have certain days that I walk. I have certain days that I lift and that helps me to make it manageable um, while still working all these different muscle groups to, you know, to keep building the muscle that I have. Well, I mean, I can I can tell you, and, and you're not just building muscle and working out of the gym. You're eating right, you're eating healthy. You know, you've got your meal plan, your prep. There's so much involved in that. Um, I, you know, and, and we'll get to the masters in a little bit because now you also, with your five K, just shaved off your personal best, right? One hour, sixteen seconds. Yeah, I just, so when I started five Ks. Uh, I really started them during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So I was at that point just walking around my neighborhood. And in fact, I first started, started out walking about maybe a half mile or so 
at a time. The first 5K that I did around my neighborhood took me an hour and 20 minutes, uh, and that was probably a couple years ago. So the fact that now I'm at just over an hour is, you know, I think it really shows the time that I've put in to build up the, the endurance to be able to go that fast without feeling completely miserable. I mean, I'm not going to say that I wasn't super sore the next day, but um, it's helped a lot too just being really mindful of my pace lately. I mean, I knew I wanted to shave off some time. So I started wearing my smartwatch and really started, okay, I'm at this pace right now. I'm going to start out a little slow. I'm going to go a little faster on the next mile, a little faster on the next mile until I get it, you know, where I want it to be. And I, I don't think people realize that, that it's not just I go out and I do it. There's a thought process to it. And there's a there's a planning that goes into what do I think I can realistically do? And then of mm -hmm. course, in my case, how do I push myself just a little bit further than that, you know, to see where things are at. You know, you were talking about, you know, um, you know, having the process, you know, talking about Siobhan here, you know, with, with weightlifting and getting up at four like my now. ultimate inspiration, girl. I mean, Every time I see a picture of you, I'm like, that is what I call a warrior. I mean, this, this, this woman right here, she's scary at some point. I think if she clotheslines somebody, this thing will be in the air for a while. I, I don't, I do not want to get on that woman's bad side at all. Uh, uh y'all got to understand. The DCP chicks right here are sticking together. You know, you you put you put Christina and Siobhan's arms together. You got Arnold Schwarzenegger scared to death. Don't know what's going on. Um, but you know, it's amazing the prep that is involved because, um, the dedication that it takes to stay on the path. Um, I know when I'm training and I'm actually training right now for uh, my next tournament, I know when I'm training at, in, in three months burst, it's hard enough. I'm like, man, I want a donut. I can't have it. I'm training and it's calling me going, DJ. And you can't do it because you got needs carbs, but you just gotta find a substitute for those carbs. There are yeah. other ways to do that, you know. So let me ask you this with the five Ks. You know, you talked about you know getting a little bit of time off your next mile, and there's a process to it. You did not wear your smartwatch in this last five K because it was broken. So you had no idea. Well, what I don't your think I on my wrist because I feel like feel so weird, you know, not wearing it. And the heart mm -hmm. rate tracker was working for a minute, so at least I could know where my heart rate was, and that eventually stopped too. And I'm getting sent a new one because I haven't had it for very long. But that was probably the toughest thing about this last 5K is that it died 15 minutes in. I didn't know what time it was. I didn't have a pace on my wrist. I just had my tunes in, and I was just going. And I knew that I was keeping. I guess what I felt like was a moderately fast pace, but didn't really realize how fast I was going until I hit the second mile. And one of my coworkers who was a volunteer on the course looks at me and says, McCormick, you're at, uh, you know, like 38 or 39 minutes for two miles. And I went, Oh my gosh. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh. Like I knew I was going for a record at that point, but I said to myself, okay, I might want to slow down just a little bit because I don't usually go this fast and I'm not really sure what that's going to feel like by the time I get another mile down. And then I, of course, ran a little bit at the end, as I always do at the finish line. But it was definitely a challenge. And I did pay for my speed a little bit the next day. But mm -hmm. it was nice, I guess, to realize that I was able to do that, even if there was some soreness involved. What sense of accomplishment did, did it give you when you heard that time? Because when you posted it, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, there might have been some words that I can't say on the radio. Coming <laughs> out of when I looked at that time and I said something, something, does that say an hour? And I just, I mean, because I'm used to seeing hour four, hour five, hour six, hour 12 last year, you know. That, so for me to, you know, have it say that and see that and then it's like well now i've got to run because it's already my best time so i came flying into the finish and then when she's so, like, there, i was like all right time to find a chair because like it just takes a lot out of you to go and do that. one more question on the 5k if she hadn't told you your time and you just kept up the pace that you were at 
Could you imagine being under that hour? Do you imagine yourself being under that hour? I mean, I think there were some other factors too that played into it. I mean, I really felt like at that point I was going as fast as I could go, whether I had known what that time was or not. I mean, I mm -hmm. definitely in that last half mile was like starting to hit my fatigue point. So I think it was going to be what it was going to be regardless. I mean, I, I do have a, a certain limit when you start getting closer to three miles and kind of got to manage the speed with the awkwardness so you don't trip over your own feet, you know? Well, and, and here's the thing. Uh, you know, I, I know Christina quite well. We, we talk not every day, but, but quite a bit. And I, I told her that her sense of it, you know, of accomplishment, she's she's not going to stop. She's going to reach for the stars and keep going and, you know, push through, which is what I love about her because she does it so well. Um, you know, you just you just got your master's and what an awesome accomplishment. Um, accomplishment. You uh, defended your thesis um, and, you know, back in, when was that, June 17th? I think? It was 17th, yeah, it was a, fr it was a Friday, Friday. Yeah. Um, you know, that accomplishment in itself, having a master's degree, where, where is your mindset right now with that? I mean, I feel really accomplished for having done something like that. I mean, there are a lot of people out there that have gotten master's degrees, but to have a master's degree from a university in another country, in a language you don't speak, mm. you know, is another, really another feat of its own and I don't say that to brag but it's just it's hard it's a language I didn't grow up speaking it's something that I have really really had to apply myself and work hard and I other people think I make it look easy but that doesn't mean that there's not an amount of work that goes into it that makes you I mean it that whole thing made me really really stressed and DJ saw it there was a day where I was like DJ I need you to not talk to me until I get this done because I need to focus on this. And we all know CP, you can do about one thing at a time. And, you know, it was just, I was down to the wire and it was like, all right, I've worked hard and this is going to have to be good enough. That's another thing that has made the masters mm -hmm. rather difficult is that I'm a perfectionist. And, uh, I, I just, I just want to read this comment here. My, my broadcasting teacher is on live right now with us. And he said, love her smile, cute as a button. This guy right here it, it is the guy that trained me in radio broadcasting and DJing. And uh, we just did an event for him with him uh, last Saturday for the Special Olympics. And it was just, you know, awesome, you know, to, to be around him. And he still has that teaching mentality, you know. And I always, you know, I have so much respect for him in the sense that it, you know, you being a teacher yourself, when you are able to reach children on a certain level and you're able to help them understand you've gotten letters from your class from your from your students i think the golden apple award you received, i mean is there anything you haven't done in your early career of teaching aside from like have your own school named after you like i mean <laughs> i mean gosh i thank you for the compliments but uh i you know, I do what I can do, and I'm always looking for new opportunities. I have done, you know, a little bit of tutoring on the side as well as teaching, just trying to expand my horizons. And I'm, I've am i never been a person who's been afraid to try new things, and so that's kind of driven my career thus far. Um, I've got some new and exciting classes coming up. Uh, next year, some different things that we're trying involving technology. I won't awesome too many more details there, but I'm really looking forward to kind of expanding um, what I've been doing in the classroom for students in other areas as well. So. Now, you were talking a little bit, and I, and I want to mention this because I, I think a lot of people struggle with this statement, including myself, when good enough is good enough. And I can tell you... Uh, with this guy, you know, David, especially, he will push you, but he does it constructively. And you said, you know, I had to realize when I was working hard, enough is enough. It's good enough. Is it hard for you to, to, to get to the point where you think you're good enough or you think it's good enough? 
Yeah, I mean, I'm always working to improve myself, and I'm my own worst critic, you know, but it comes to a point where it's like, where I said to myself with this thesis, it's like, I've read it over four times. I've checked my sources. I've, you know, had a friend read it over for me. I've done all these things, and it comes to a point where, you know, perfectionist or not, you say, okay, I, this is it. Like, I've got to put this aside and move on to the next thing that I have uh, waiting for me. So, David said, okay, DJ, you can teach my kids karate and she can tutor the kiddos. Um, I, again, it's uh, I'm so happy that he's here, especially with you being on this episode. I, I took every class that he had. And when you get that teacher that you respect and you want to be around, it became more about learning life from him, you know, hanging out with him, going on boat trips, going to cottages, learning uh, to drive race boats, learning to set up DJ equipment, all of that. I mean, getting that hands on experience. And you have students that care about you that much because they, when they see Miss McCormick, they know what they're going to get out of her, which is her best. And that's, that's an amazing feat. Um, well, and I have to say too, you know, speaking from my own personal experience, I've had a lot of great teachers along the way as well. Not, not just teachers in the classroom, but, you know, specifically the physical therapists that I've had and the personal trainers. Those are the people for me that have pushed me, but also shown me a lot of kindness in some very, very difficult moments that I've had over these last two and a half, three years, you know, trying to be a better version of myself and i mean i think everybody can benefit from a good teacher whether it be a teacher in the classroom or some other form of mentor who can be there for them to really show them how it's done and give them some encouragement mm -hmm. and i i think that is the key right there encouragement but you don't want to have their head blow up so big that they, you know, they think they're untouchable. And I think that's where teachers are, are so highly needed because it takes a very special person to be a teacher. I mean, to, to be able to teach a group of kids, whether they have disabilities or not, whether it's language, whether it's Spanish, whether it's technology, um, just in you know, the moments of your career now, as early as it, as early as, as it is, do you see a point where you want to, you know, what is your next level of teaching? Ooh, um, you know, I just finished a master's. I think I got her. I think I got her with that. Ooh, I, uh, I, I just finished a master's and I'm just going to lay low for a while. Like, I, I, you know, I, I was asked about mentoring and all of that. And I was like, you know, I just finished a master's. I'm not saying I'm not open to being a mentor for somebody else, you know, coming in, just starting out in the classroom. But right now I need some time for me and I'm going to do me. And, you know, in a year or two, we'll see where things are at. I do not have any in, uh, any interest right now in being an administrator at school. I really feel like my place has always been in the classroom and i'm not saying that couldn't change mm -hmm. um but as of right now i really do just enjoy being with the students every day and helping them to continue to grow and learn and the the joy that a teacher brings to a student's life that's there is something that can, almost cannot be described by that you know uh dave mentioned catching sharks at, at Jeanette's pier um, you know, this was, again, a teaching moment. I had never fished that Jeanette's Pier before in Nag's Head. I go out there, and we're using live bait. I'm going, there's mullet on it. And all of a sudden, I drop a pole in the water, and this 15-pound shark just boom, takes it and pulls it down. I'm like, uh, I don't know what this is. And then there's a, a team of people down the, down the pier. Nobody's catching anything. For five hours... I caught 10 shans ten, 10 shans in five hours. And the, the moment that I'm pulling them in, you know, Dave's right there. You got it, you got it, you got it a little more, a little more, a little more. And that encouragement was 
the the point to keep you going. So you have that that tenacity, that, that fire, that love, because they, they they draw off that. And it's amazing to me what you've done already. Um, Cindy says this. I think Christina is is the best person to be on your show today. Since showing others that if you want it bad enough, you can do it, and that's that's very true. I mean, Thank you, Cindy. I, I there's nothing that I haven't seen Christina accomplish. Uh, I was I was mainstream from kindergarten through sixth grade, and I learned as I go through. It, teach me to school. I I teach myself at home all over again. So again, there's that having that connection that you're talking about with children and influencing their lives in a good way. Um, I will you know, never forget some of the teaching moments with Dave because that's those moments stay here. Those moments live inside me. And when we see each other, it's like being taught all over again. And he's not, he's not, you know, cocky or anything. It's just the way that he teaches it impacts you. And I think that is what you do for people. I think that's what you do for your students, your friends, your family. You're able to make that impact. And like I said, there's nothing that I haven't seen you do. You can't reach every student, but you always try. And you be kind and you build those connections and you get to know them. And if for some reason there's a student that you just can't get through to, you hope that some other caring adult will come and, you know, and reach them along the way. It's you know, teachers are only human, but we really do do our best to be in it for the kids and make those connections with the kids to help them be successful because without a connection, that learning doesn't happen like it's supposed to happen. Lena got a great comment here. There's nothing like a dedicated teacher like you, Christina McCormick. You're a, you definitely are a role model for your students. I think that word right here, dedication to teaching. Teachers are teachers are so undervalued. They're so they're underpaid. They're undervalued. They work their butts off for for peanuts. I mean, it's it you know it's it's it. Being a teacher is is not not a job. I believe that that's a lifestyle because when you teach, you never stop. And it's not the, it's not the, the what I say goes. Um, that's not what I'm talking about. It's for for a student. Try not to get emotional here. For a student that thinks they fail, and then a teacher shows them that they don't, um, that they are not a failure like they're, they're like everybody else. But they're going to push you beyond the level of what you're capable of. And you may get mad. You may get angry. And you may get angry and say, why did you do that? Because they can see from the outside looking in what you are capable of. And they will push you to your limit, but you will respect them afterwards. And Spanish is a hard language. It is. I took Spanish as much as I could, and I retained some of it. And and Christina will say something, what I, what I love about it, I can ask her a phrase, and she'll say it, and I'll go, huh? Like, what world? Like, can you say that a little slower? And then she'll break it down, word by word. But not only does she break it down, this means this, this is backwards because, this has the S or the A behind it because, you're, you're taking the knowledge that he's giving you with the phrase that you're learning, and you're going, wow, I did not know that. That's why this sounds like this. That's why this goes up. Like, and when you retain that information going into the next year, you're going, wow, I can do this. You think I'm, I have never written down anything in Spanish, and she's just like, <laughs> I'm like, uh-oh. Um, what do you, is there a, what do you think most difficult in teaching? Well, you know, I think with the, I think with the pandemic the last couple of years, the thing that's 
not the thing that's the most difficult, but the thing that I've tried to work the most on is those relationships with the students and really building that up. But it's been also very challenging in past years where we haven't been in the classroom full time. You know, we've been learning from home or for a while we were in the classroom most of the week, but at home on Wednesdays, even last year with having students back in the classroom, there was still a lot of student absences that you had to keep up with. And it was really, as a teacher, I really felt that I needed to give my best effort to connect with those kids, whether they were in the classroom or at home, to make sure they weren't falling behind on something and make sure they know that I was there for them, but that they also had to put forth, you know, a certain amount of effort as well, as far as trying things and coming to me with their questions so that we could have this cooperative relationship to make mm-hmm. sure that they could be successful. So, so uh, again, do you notice the way she answered that? She does, Christina takes difficulty and I think she looks at it as, all right, you want to get the best of me? Fine. I'll attack you sideways. I'll attack you front ways, back ways. If I fall on the floor, I get back up, kick you and do it again. I mean, it just, I, you know, but you do teach, but you also teach on the CP Chronicles with Kyle. I mean, you guys have a great show every other Saturday, and it, and you guys are on on a hiatus right now, taking a break because you guys have been working hard. Um, you know, you teach in everything that you do, and you can tell that's what you were born to be. I guess my question for you now is, if you have a student that you work with all through you know, 9, 10, 11, 12, all the way up. And you've watched them grow up because some students grow up in high school. You find that out real quick. What does it mean for you when they come back and they say, you know, I remember you were were my teacher. You were my favorite. You did this, you did that. What does that do for you as a teacher? Those are the things that are so validating. And you, you hold on to that when you've had a rough day because there are some rough days where you just feel like you haven't done enough and you know you're just discouraged and then hearing something like that it's 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 a reminder to any teacher like okay this is exactly why i'm doing what i'm doing because whether or not you realize you made those connections right now Mm -hmm. you know sometimes it's years later that we see the results the positive results of it means everything, honestly. It's just extremely validating because it doesn't happen very often. And so when it does, you just you really um, you really hold on to that feeling. Do you feel that teachers are undervalidated? Do you feel that they need more validation? Is there enough validation for teachers? That's a really tough question because it depends where you're at it depends so much on the situation and i really have to say that i am i'm you know i'm at a good school and i'm in a good place and i have felt supported but there are teachers out there that that don't feel that way and i just think you know the pandemic has made it that much harder because people were thinking, oh, well, you know, teachers are teaching from home. That's not really teaching. And in reality, that's actually harder than being in the classroom with our students because that's where we wanted to be for so long, but couldn't be. And it was, you know, learning new technologies to make that work. And so I do think there's points, yes, where we might be a little undervalued by certain people, but you've Mm got to not let that get to you. I know that I'm a professional um you know and i know that what i have to say is valuable and not everybody's going to agree with that but that doesn't mean that i'm not still going to do my best for my students but see there was a phrase that you said there that still doesn't mean that i'm going to do my best for my students and in doing that you do what's best for yourself um i want to go back a little bit early in your career when you were first starting out and I've gone back and I've looked at, you know, some of the posts that you had, um, because I want to ask this early in your career, who were some of your role models that you looked up to? Uh, I had an English teacher that I had for 
two years in high school. He, I had him as a sophomore and again as a senior. And I remember graduating and him writing me a recommendation letter and saying how happy he was for me and how excited he was that one day we could be colleagues. And uh, my first, my very first uh, day officially at Streeter High School at the new teacher orientation, he's, he was the head of the mentoring program. And he said, all right, uh, mentees, you should have received an email for your mentors. You can go ahead and pair up with them and we'll do this activity. And he comes and he sits next to me and he says, Hi, kiddo. I hope you don't mind, but I chose you to be my mentee because I'm a little selfish and I'd kind of like to help you along. And I just had to laugh and I was like, okay, Mark, you know, let's, let's, like, let's get this going. Let's do this thing. And he's been amazing. I mean, I was just sending him questions the last week of school. I had a question about, um, a grade and something wasn't entering right and I'm like, hey, did you or you know, we ask each other questions about you know, so and so student that's been absent. Have you heard anything? What's the what's the what's the dealio? How can I help this kid? There's just but there's always been a lot of back and forth, like helping each other out. And there's been times where he's asked me opinions about technology things like okay i'm doing this group activity and i want to have each group comment on it do i just share a google doc with everybody how do i set this up it's been amazing to have a mentor that's had me not only as a student in the classroom but has gotten to see me become the teacher that i've become and i think a big part of the reason why i am the teacher that i am is because i had a mentor like that who who is a positive role model and who has always just been super encouraging throughout everything. We've had a, we've had a great relationship and I mean, it's something that we've continued even now this summer, we've been emailing back and forth. I was telling them about my master's and pitching that, and, you know, it's, it's the relationship, like relationships like those, you really, they're just hard to find sometimes and you really should value them and, you know, stay in touch with those people. Like, cause those are the kind of relationships that you really can keep for your whole life. And, uh, it's just a super valuable thing that seems more and more hard to find these mm -hmm. days. And, and, and you, you carry that with you throughout, throughout your lifetime. I mean, it's not just a school thing that sticks because that's, that's what you know he was there for you early in your career and you look at it now and you look at the accomplishments now and it's like wow you know five years is a long time um and to be teaching especially with the pandemic where a lot of it was virtual classes a lot of it was taking attendance virtually you had to go through and you had to be there and you had to do and then you, you don't have the camaraderie that with the students that you normally have because virtual is different. As much as it, as much as I love doing the show virtual, if I was sitting next to Christina right now, I probably couldn't keep my my focus because it's just it's different when you're in the same room. I I personally hate online teaching. I was very apprehensive about online stuff because I do better in a structured desk people oriented classroom. Dave is walking around. I hear the, the sound of the shoes. I hear the chalk in the chalkboard. I can ask a question. If the question doesn't make sense, he can break it down and say, try it this way. You can do that, but then you've got peeps and peeps and books and boops in the internet. It goes down, it comes back up, then you got to restart stuff and all that. It just, it's, it's one of those things where I'm like, can I please just in front of somebody? <sighs> I, to me, there was so much anxiety in, in teaching, but even with martial arts and teaching virtually, man, you're, oh my God, it's so much different because you're mirrored. Everything that you're doing is mirrored. Um, I, I want to, I want to, I got to ask you this because honestly, I, I don't know. And I, I think I asked this earlier, but I want to ask it in a different context. Uh, we know you're getting ready to go, um, to Spain at some point. Um, gosh, what are you going to do now? I mean, what what goals do you have for yourself? In addition to, you know, I'm going to take it easy a little bit because you've earned that. 
But what goals do you have now? Goals right now, honestly, this this next year is going to be balanced. And I'm not talking CP, I have bad coordination, falling over balance. It's going to be really balancing the workouts that I've really been doing, you know, this spring and especially this summer, it's going to be balancing school, healthy eating, you know, to continue to be the best me. And it's going to be flexibility and knowing that when I go back to work, I'm not going to keep my insane gym schedule. I'm going to have to find some hybrid of that. That's going to allow me to be a fully functioning human being um, while still, you know, getting done when I need to get done for work and being able to go to the gym. So, you know, I, I was waiting for you to say CP this whole time. You do all of this, and you have cerebral palsy. I mean, I look. I will tell you, I don't let CP stop me, but I gotta say it. Holy, how do you do all this with CP? Like, oh, oh, dang! I don't even have it sitting right here. I was about to pull out my deep blue and be like, "This is the secret." <laughs> Uh, sitting on my sitting on my nightstand. Um, mm. Tylenol is my friend. I stretch every day, and I mean every day, every morning and every night. You know, I there there's there are a certain amount of aches and pains that come with my crazy. I'm just thankful that I have people like my personal trainer and my physical therapist who put up with my crazy. Um, and understand that that's part of the process and that I am going to push myself, but they're there to say, okay, you're going to push yourself. And if you want this to be your goal, how do I help you get there? Mm -hmm. safely? Mm -hmm. How do I, you know, how do we make this work for you? And, and that's, that's what I love. Like that's, that's just the biggest thing for me. I mean, I know everybody's got limits and I know there's things that maybe I can't do right now, but I'm just extremely fortunate to have people that are willing to help me figure out how to take that next step when I'm not sure how to do that. That's that's one of the, the other things that is so cool about you is your ability to structure things and your ability to have that support team, physical therapy, occupational therapy, teachers, friends, relatives, and you, you get it structured, not just in what are we going to do, but okay, here's step A, here's step B, here's step C, here's step D. If A doesn't work, we can go to B, C, D, E, F. If that doesn't work, we go here. And, and it's it's more of, um, I think, your, your time management, which is what I struggle with, because I remember um, earlier this year and earlier last year and the year before that, the, some of the struggles you had with chronic pain. And it's... You get those moments where you're like, DJ, I'm going to scream. And it's, it's, we all have those days. It, yeah. It, I mean, it has not been easy, but I just think I sat there a lot and thought about the fact that it's not always going to be like this. And I had an amazing support system to remind me of that. And then getting to the other side of, some of that, I'm not going to say I don't still have my aches and pains, mm -hmm. but getting to that other side, it was like, okay, it makes it almost worth it. Not that it was a fun time, but it makes it like, okay, mm -hmm. you know, I, apparently I had to go through that for my body to figure itself out so that I could take the next step. You know, I really try to just take everything as it is, and it really is a day by day thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you have an issue and you're not sure, you don't have to go it alone. You know, you reach out to a physical therapist, you reach out to a friend, and you figure out how to go forward. You figure out what your next step is. I And I, I was waiting to bring this up last because we got about 15 minutes left, and I've got a couple segments that I want to do. But I, I want to talk about this. Um, you know, and I've said this before, uh, you've heard this before from several people, sometimes you push too hard. And when life pushes back, and you go backwards a little bit, you don't like that. You're kind of the bull in the china closet. I've got to get to the end. And that's where you and I are the same. We're very stubborn in the fact that when something knocks us down, we're like, all right, okay, 
fall back. Why? 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 Right. Like, I mean, I feel like when that happens, it's just like, I'm just over here stewing, like, what's my plan of attack, you know, next? Like, and it, you know, we do sometimes have those those steps backwards, too, but it's important to remember that that's also part of the journey, you know, and without those, we wouldn't have Without those, I wouldn't have learned so many of the things that I've learned over the last three years about patience. And the mental aspect was tough for me, too. I mm. really, you know, I was really hard on myself. And I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I've gotten better at that. I've realized no. that, you know, it's okay to freak out, but you just don't camp out and live there. You right, know, right. You learn how to let that out, and then you move on. And that's all you can do. I mean, there's only so much that we can control. If I if I could describe you in one word, and the word that sticks out the most is determination. You are one of the most determined people that I know. And what freaks me out about this show and about doing this right here, you're only 27. I'm gonna look at 35 and be like, well, we're gonna have to move to that ladder a little higher. I mean, you know. Because it, I, I don't, I don't think there's there's anything that you can't do. I mean, it, it's it's, and to see that, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be real for a second. You got male and female. I don't see that with Christina. I see you put a you put a task in front of Christina. She's gonna find a way to accomplish it. It's not going to be easy. She's not gonna gripe and complain and yada yada and moan about what she can't do. She's going to find a way to get it done. And being as young as you are, I'm told you, I'm going, man, if you don't get your butt in here, like it, it's inspiring to talk to you and go, you did this and you did this and you did this. But the reality of it is there is a slow down point. And you've got to take that for you and be okay with it. Um, because I think that's where you you go so hard. You're bam, 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 bam. When you there's a, there's a slowdown point. I believe it or not, I do know what recovery days are, um, and I do use them regularly. I know I don't post about that, but I do spend some time on the couch recovering from some things that I'm learning to do that more often. So, mm -hmm. Cindy says it's good to be stubborn to some point. Otherwise, we would just give up just to say the heck with it. And I, and I understand that. But yeah, no, I mean, I, I don't think that I would be where I am without being stubborn. Mm. So a certain amount of that, that's never really going to change. All right. So I got we got about like 12 minutes left. This hour goes so fast. Good Lord. Um, so I, I have this thing. And I have these questions, and a couple of them I haven't asked you. Um, I have 30 of them. Um, and I, I want to ask, where is one place in the world that you haven't gone that you would love to go to? I haven't spent a whole lot of time in Mexico. Um, I've been to Spain but I think, you know, there's a lot of areas in Mexico that I teach about that I haven't necessarily visited. So I would at some point like to do that. Although Spain in itself is an amazing country that's provided me with uh, several amazing study abroad opportunities. So I feel like Spain is always going to have a sort of a special place in my heart because it was the first country that I traveled to. And it was the first time I really, um, you know, put myself out there with my Spanish skills, living and studying in another country, living with a family that didn't speak English, you know. It was a challenging experience, but it was a good experience. So. Okay. What is one thing on your bucket list? Example, bungee jumping, canoeing, space travel. What is uh, your, what's one thing on your bucket list? So there will not be any bungee jumping over here. I don't know if you knew that about me, but I feel like bad balance and heights just don't go together. And that might be part of why that uh, fear has developed over the years. I really, I guess right now my bucket list is mostly uh, physical stuff. At some point I want to do a 10K because I just feel like that would be really awesome. So that'd be, that would be six points two miles uh 
but when I said that to Trisha the other day, who was my one of my amazing physical therapists that I've worked with over the years, uh, she said, <laughs> she goes, before you do a 10K, I want you to do a 5K and say, Trisha, I feel great. My ankles don't even hurt. And I, without skipping a beat, I looked at her and I said, well, then we got some work to do because the last one had me on the couch for three days. So... Christina, what is your favorite thing about yourself? What's that? What is your favorite thing about yourself? My favorite thing about myself? You're hitting me with some hard questions today. Look, I, I know. I'm swinging for the fences, girl. I, I done pulled out the last seat. I, got the I like that I'm a little bit crazy because it, it allows me to... Um, do some things without completely like overthinking it and then deciding that I don't want to do it. Like it gives me that extra push to be like, all right, if I hate this fine, but I'm going to try it at least once. All right. This next segment is called I would. Okay. If you could travel anywhere in the world right now and be there instantaneously, just snap your fingers and be there. Suitcases packed. Wherever you could go, anywhere in the world, where would it be? I would probably go to Spain again to visit my host mom that I stayed with on my first trip. We've been able to keep in contact, and I was there in 2015, and then in 2019 when I went for the first year of my master's program, I visited her again, and it was just like no time had passed. You know, she really took me in. I really felt like part of the family. Um, and that experience just meant so much to me that it would really mean a lot for me to get to spend some time with her again, you know, three years later now and see what she's doing and where life is going and to really get to tell her about all the things that I've been doing. So what is one thing that well, let me uh, actually let me re rephrase this. If you could have any food, any food in the entire world, eat anywhere you wanted to, money is no object, you would go where or eat what? I, I mean, I would be eating any homemade Spanish dish that my host mom could, could cook up. It was a good thing that the first time I studied in Spain, I walked just about everywhere because let me tell you, the way that woman cooks, I wouldn't have been fitting in my clothes when I left if I hadn't been walking everywhere. Like, she was the most amazing cook. Everything was good. I had nothing that I did not like. All right, last question, and then I'm going to give you moments to just share, you know, a little bit. Um, I want to ask you this what are you most afraid of? What do you, what scares you the most right now? It can be about yourself. It can be something that you haven't conquered yet. What are you, what do you most fear and how do you plan to get past it? You would what? I mean, I, I won't, I won't hide that I fear failure because I'm a perfectionist, but I really do try to, you know, look at things in a positive way and find a way to keep going. And, you know, sometimes I know that sometimes something is not for me at the moment, but that doesn't mean that it can't be a goal for later on. You know, you just said something that I kind of want to touch on. You actually said two things. I feel failure. I, I fear failure. You know, I don't, I don't see you failing at all. There, there, and, and, and this is kind of, you said the other thing, I'm a perfectionist. Where have I heard that before? Just this, that's all I needed right there. I just, I, I, you know, I, I, I've heard this so many times. I'm a, I'm a perfectionist. I strive for perfection. The one thing we have to realize as people is we're human. We're, we're not going to be perfect. You can, you can strive for it. As much as you want, I've got to get there. I've got to get it. It's got to be just right. But if you strive so hard for perfection, 
you're going to take the enjoyment out of what you're doing at the current moment in your life. And I'm going to say this, and if it, it hits you, it hits you. You are not a failure. You don't need to fear failure because you kick failures, but, but it's, it's not. But it's like I said, if something's not for me right now, I don't really consider that a failure either. I mean, there were times where I wanted this time on a 5k or I wanted this, I wanted that. And it didn't happen. I don't look at that as a failure though. I look at that as a learning experience. And I look at that as a challenge to try to figure out how can I do better than this next time? You just said it. I look at it as a challenge as to how can I do better with this next time? Because all failure is is another road to the goal that you're trying to reach. That's it. People say, I have failed. I didn't succeed. Hold on. How did you not succeed if you learned something? How many times are you going to touch a stove before it's hot and you say, oh, I ain't going to do that no more? How many times are you going to pull a 500-pound TV on a 12-pound TV tray and say, I shouldn't do that? Or put a penny in a light socket and it goes, and you're like, oh, God, I shouldn't do that. Failure is not failure. Failure is another option, another way to get things done. So my last question is this. I just, I, um, you know, look at yourself now as to where you are at this very moment. If you could go back to one of your most trying, most difficult, most, most scary moments, and you could go back to yourself and go, look at me now. What would you say to that woman in that fearful moment of, oh, my God, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Oh, my God, that whole freak out moment. What would you say to her? Okay, Tucker, that's a good answer. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's not dinner time yet, Tucker, so you're going to have to be patient, my friend. I would, I guess I would just tell myself to keep going. I mean, I think that every emotion that I've had along this almost three-year journey is, has been valid. Like, everybody has those points where you just freak out. But I would just tell myself to keep going because, you know, that's that's why I am where I am. Because even if I was super angry or super upset, I kept going and I eventually got through those things, um, however scary they were at that particular time. You are, you are amazing. Like that, that's. And this is why I like having you on this show, because every time you're on here, the show is different and we reach so many people because we don't know how it's going to go. I don't write stuff down. I, I'm, you know, this is coming straight here and we, we, we hit it back and forth. Like ping pong, bing, 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 bing. You are an amazing person. Um, you're an amazing athlete. You're an amazing teacher. I can't say amazing enough because it's just there. Everything that you do, you strive for, for, for perfection, which is good, but but know that your great, your great is good enough. No, remember that. That's the one thing when you accomplish something, remember that you are good enough. I want to thank you for being on the show with me today. Guys, uh, stay with me just a second here, Christina. You can reach me on YouTube. I see Peter's not to find me. Uh, work the way with DJ Carter, Chairmaster Games, Twitter, my CP does not define me at Minion Sports, uh, blog, Carter DJ85 at wixsite.com. Uh, you can reach me on um, Instagram, my CP does not define me, where I always say, if you can't be good, be bad, but be good at it. This is D to the J with the roll away saying, we'll see you next week. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for this week's episode of My CP Does Not Define Me. As always, you can catch us every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on the Disability Global Broadcast and Facebook Live. 
if you haven't already checked out our YouTube channel, My CC Does Not Define Me, we post all of the show videos in our My CP playlist. I'm your host, D to the J with the roll. And if you can't be good, be bad, but be good. At, we'll see you next week.